Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here, and we're talking about shipping reptiles part three. So today, right now, I'm gonna be showcasing you how I ship reptiles. Now, we can get into like a bunch of different sizes. If you guys are interested in learning more or different ways of, of like packing boxes or like different type of boxes, and you wanna learn more about them, make sure you comment on this video and let me know like what you wanna learn about shipping and then I can have like maybe some like small videos to explain to you guys uh, what to do during certain scenarios you know like I'll I'll gladly share all that knowledge but I mean sometimes there's just so much and then I get carried away so I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna talk to you about the way that I ship one certain type of box and then it's the same thing for different sizes so we're gonna go with these basically already pre-made live harmless reptile shipping boxes so you can purchase those like not necessarily some like that but they're a shipping services company. Uh, I'm not gonna name anybody. I'm not favoritizing anybody. Uh, deal with whoever you feel comfortable in dealing with. Uh, make sure that you call them up, uh, ask them about as many information as you can get from them on how their, how their procedures are and go from there. So I'm gonna go like as if I'm shipping FedEx, okay? So I'm gonna pack with a FedEx box today and then uh, I'm gonna explain to you basically what I do if I do airports as well. There's just a few different things. Basically, the main thing is I basically puncture holes into the box. Now, when I get uh, these boxes in, it basically comes with styrofoam and cardboard. Now, FedEx requires us to basically make sure that we don't puncture any holes. I guess they're really scared about animals coming out, even though a lot of people can be shipping bigger snakes, but I mean, they just don't want anything coming out they're just afraid of the press or any bad scenarios that can happen. So they require that not to happen. So what we do though, is we basically do put holes inside our star foam. So we just like, I'll just take a pen and I'll put in like a big piece of hole in my star foam, uh, just for extra like ventilation. I mean, it might feel like a little bit, uh, like, you know, like, Nothing I do is really, it's all based on experience and my beliefs, right? I mean, nothing is really a research and all that, but like cardboard breathe is a little bit better than star foam. So like sometimes there's a little bit of air. So I just like do a little extra thing that uh, probably doesn't do anything, but it just definitely makes, this is the way I do it. Uh, it makes me feel better and I have good results. So, I mean, if I have good results, then I'm going to keep doing that, that I do. Now you can see that these, uh, Starfoam are very thin. Okay, now Starfoam is great. It's an extra insulation. So I mean when it gets carried away, it basically prevents the temperature changes. It uh, delays temperature changes um, Drastic temperature changes, but I still feel that those Starfoam are a little bit off So what I do is I grab fiberglass now this normal pink fiberglass that we basically buy at uh, hardware stores. Now, I basically, I will cut it down. So today I'm gonna do it not as clean as I do. I'll take an X-Acto blade, make sure that I cut it down as well as I can. But I definitely do like to use this as an extra insulation. I like to go overboard. I wanna go overboard because you know what? Let's say um, this box stays outside overnight. So FedEx, uh, the FedEx driver came in. Uh, he was, he had too much. He wasn't able to, or he ended up getting traffic. He wasn't able to finish his run and he's basically going back home with all these boxes inside his truck that is not necessarily insulated um these animals might stay overnight might stay i don't know they might be left on the tarmac we've had some big issues that sometimes they're just left on the tarmac and then if they're left on the tarmac is basically outside uh at a <clears throat> at an airport you know i mean if these things happen i mean we got to be able to have extra insulation to delay the temperature change. It's gonna happen, but we gotta delay it as much as we can. So I'll, I grab like a little sheet, and then from that point on, then I go in. So here, I'm just gonna go through it. I'm just gonna rip it this time, but usually I do like to make it as neat as possible. So I'll take an X-Acto blade, cut it so that it's very straight. I like it when it's clean. It's very, very important. I want the customer to open this box and open it as if it's a gift. So I just put in this layer of insulation in as this extra insulation. Now, I'll take in some extra pieces. Again, don't cut it with your hands. Take the extra time, use, use a knife, use scissors, 
and do that. Now, fiberglass does have little pieces of glass. A lot of people don't like to handle it because uh, it can hit itch them or whatnot. For me, I've been used to it. We've been doing this for 20 years and it's been really the key to it. We feel that we do a lot more. Now, often a lot of things can happen. Okay, there are issues, accidents, or uh, delays that happen. Um, but when a client receives our box and their snake is cold, or their snake is, there's a little bit something that was off, there was some issues, they definitely don't blame the issue on us because they see how much we actually care and how much extra we put in compared to other people. That is definitely a way for mentality, for people to understand that it's very important. We gotta go overboard because we are dealing with live animals. Now, for me, fiberglass, I don't like my animals to be directly on top of the fiberglass. I just don't like it. I also like that aspect of unwrapping a gift. So we do put paper inside. So I have some papers here. And then <clears throat> it can be just like, it could be newspaper. Um, sometimes I like to have like fancy papers or whatnot. And then what I do is I'll just fold them to the proper sizes and just insert them in. Now I can put, I can put four, I can put two as long as I'm able to cover it. So you know what, for this one here, I'm going to put three pieces of paper. So I'll just line it up at the bottom. I fold it back in so I can see what I'm working on right now. There's the next one here. And then that's what it is. You know, it's like it's like when you're wrapping gifts for Christmas, you know? Make sure that you're doing it for your kids, for your family members. Go overboard, make it nice. You know? Buy some fancy papers. I mean, a lot of people like to make uh, stuff with the brand. Make make NBK Reptiles branded paper or something like that. You know, make That's it look idea. good, you know? So I mean, uh, so this is basically how it is. So I basically covered all my edges. So I know that once I, I put in my animals, I'm gonna unwrap it and put them inside. Now, today we have, uh, we picked up a snake. It's a honey cypress, 66% het lavender. Now this animal is definitely amazing quality, uh, looking good. Uh, when you're uh, unraveling the animal, uh, it's not full. You can see like it's pretty empty, like it's not just inflated. So this animal is basically, uh, if I would give them a meal today, it would eat, it would be full, but it's basically due to give the meal. But today we're shipping it, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So here, I'm just gonna look for a little cup. Uh, I have, where do I put my cups? Have a lid where we put the cup. Cup. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. So I'm gonna There you go. That was pretty good. So, um, we're gonna go with this. Uh, Looking actually, for a cup right, right now. That. So you guys gotta brace yourself. I'm just gonna get a cup. Woo! The snake is hyped. Okay. So we got our cup. Um, sorry for this. Should have dealt with that before, but no. Nah. So basically this snake here is pretty big. So before in part two video, I showed you a snake that was a little bit bigger than that into half that size. So this cup here is a 48 ounce container. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put some bedding. So before I showed you a diamond dry bedding, but I have a bedding right now that I currently use. It's called a Comfort Fresh. Now, it's a paper bedding, but it, it's just basically like a threaded, paper bedding. It's really, it looks good. It's very absorbent, which is really, really what I like the most. See that thing? This thing is hyped up. So, um, I'll put in the animal. I have my lid. The lid is wet. If you, if you don't understand why it's wet is because go back to part two video. Uh, there's, there's water everywhere. We try to clean up, but we want to get those videos done, right? So that's where it is. Now I'm going to put it sideways here. So this is basically what I do. So when I put them sideways, I look up in here and I tell I can tell myself that there's about 50% of animal mass into this cup. This means I am very happy with this. If there's anything, uh, the, the, the basically the humidity level go up, there's holes in the container and I'm very happy with this right now. Now, we do have a special guest with us today. We have a friend of ours, Khalil. 
from 514 Reptiles. We're just gonna give a shout out to this beautiful man right here. Come on, boy. What's going so, on? So this guy, how's it going, guys? He's been helping us also do shipping services. He's been part of this Montreal reptile community, and we're definitely having a lot of fun. I've, 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 I've given him the courses. I've given yeah. him the ways of how we're doing it, and. He's one of the good ones, so I mean... Uh, Thanks, man. I appreciate it. What are you guys doing? What are you guys feeling about? So, we're basically showcasing people how we're packing animals. Um, what's the procedure? We're basically okay. giving all the secrets of the trade, right? Yeah. Everything that I do with you, I do it with everybody. It's good. People need yeah. to know this. Definitely people need to know this. Yeah. But, so, my buddy, he came He came to this high. Yeah. I want to go it. home now. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Thanks. For this. This is, so, is, all, is this all going out today? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was say, I it's I, just a background. I expect this from MBK though. Okay, to go out every day. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I wish. One day we'll get there, you yeah. know. But uh, no, we, we have shipments going out at, at almost every day, but uh, we have fun doing it. 100%. So we'll keep better. Okay, good. I'll let you guys do it. I'll let you guys get to it. And uh, you. Take care. Good looking. Yes, thank Bye, you very guys. much. Take care. Have a good day, my man. Always fun to have cameos from our good friends. So, I mean, make sure you guys check him out. He has a YouTube channel, his Instagram, 514 Reptiles from Montreal. Amazing people, amazing people from the community. So make sure that you hype up everybody. Now, let's get back into it. So basically, once I pack my animal, now, is this good enough? It is not good enough. So I gotta make sure this animal does not get outside of the cup. But at the same time, I wanna make it very presentable. So yes, I could put a tape over it. I could put elastic bands or whatnot, but we definitely do like to just make sure that we we basically just put four little pieces of, of, of tape around the sides and just make sure that the lid is secure. So it doesn't matter how you do it exactly, but just make sure that your lid is indeed secure. Um, if you're shipping out one animal or a few animals, you just gotta make sure. So we have our little tape here. So I'm gonna go through the whole process as if I am shipping out this animal. But the truth is, it is not going right now. There we go. So the goal here is we're, it seems very straightforward, but I'm basically making sure that the tape is stuck on good. And then basically I'm adding, I'm putting a little bit of pressure just to make sure that it squeezes it in. So that it's very hard for the animal to really, really pop up. So these lids relatively well secured and we're good to go. Now, if this animal, uh, I like to place the animal in the middle. Now from this point on, it depends on the weather. So if it's um, summertime, uh, there are cryo packs uh, that you can go ahead and purchase. And basically those cryo packs are pretty cool because they keep a steady temperature of 72 Fahrenheit-ish. Now, 72 Fahrenheit seems cold. Like, so it happens very often that we have people, basically, um, we'll, send out a we'll send out a snake and the person calls us up or for shipping services or some of our animals. And you're like, my snake arrived cold. So, when someone tells me my snake arrived cold, there's a lot of questions that go into my snake arrived cold. Is it like, is it cold? Is it freezing? Is it like, what's going on? What is cold? Because 72 Fahrenheit on my hand feels very cold. So those are little things. So make sure that you get yourself a little uh, infrared thermostat uh, so that when you receive your animal, you're able to give your breeder or your vendor proper information. We got to see the temperature of the actual animal. So when you open up the bin, check the temperature, get some knowledge, you know, like try to understand where it comes from, how, how it was packed and how is that. We want to try to keep the animal between 70 to 85 Fahrenheit. You know, those are like our targets, you know, a little bit more is okay. A little bit less, we'll deal with it. Now, don't forget, I keep saying it, cold is better than warm. Now, if an animal goes down to the fifties, we're getting close to the zeros. I mean, at this point, freezing point is better than heat because there's no going back from heat. The second that you get heat, like overheat, you get neurological damages. Uh, like basically organs are gonna just fail and the animal is gonna die. Now, if it goes fr to freeze, uh, the animal might, the worst that can happen is that there are possibly neurological that can happen if uh, organs start freezing and there's basically like frozen crystals that get created uh, inside of those animals, but we, they do come back. Where heat, they don't come back. You know? So that's very, very crucial to understand that. So it's better to have very, very cold animals than very hot animals. Now I have this story once that we uh, imported animals 
with our wholesale company from uh, Indonesia. We had Sunbeam snakes, so go check them out. I'm not sure about the Latin name, but that's what they were. Basically, um, back then, maybe 10 years ago, we, we get those crates and they're like wooden crates with nothing inside. There's no insulation, no whatnot, and these animals come from super far. Now, <clears throat> most of the time, everything's okay, but there was some issues issues and delays and it created that it was in the middle of the winter and it was really cold animals got stuck outside I'm not 100 percent sure i believe like there was an issue with the plane and they had to remove all the animals out and they left them outside because they had to concentrate on the plane so when we figured out about it we ended up going pick up the animals and then everything like seemed almost like box solid it was pretty hardcore so we had about maybe like 20 20 snakes that were frozen solid and we couldn't do anything, so we have to contact our vendor, explain the situation. Very, very unfortunate situation, and we definitely don't want that ever to happen. So we have them lined up on counters, we take pictures, we showcase, we talk to the vendor, uh, we, we talk about uh, the situation and everything. So one thing goes after another, we're taking care about all the other uh, the animals, and then the next thing you know, I have one of my staff comes up, he's like, Brian, Brian, there's a snake. Like, I go up, I'm looking up, I'm like, why is this, this snake here? I'm like, these snake were rock solid, like rock solid, like crazy, frozen. And um, I go around, I turn, and basically where we had lined up 20 snakes, there was no more, none of them. So I had 20 snakes in my facility loose, just running around, like, like slithering, slithering around. Slithering around, right? So basically it was, it was insane, but these animals ended up making a real recovery. So they had just crossed the freezing point, but they were basically because of like, whichever, like the, their temperature went slowed down, they became like in dormant state and ended up like freezing, but thawed out just in time. So what, what I mean is that we have more time. So cold is better than warm. Just keep that in mind. And the more insulation we have, the more time we're going to have. So that's where it's very important. So if ever uh, it's very hot, cryo packs, cold packs uh, work. You know, uh, you can do that. Again, it's better cold than warm or make sure that there's a lot of air. Um, me, I'm not a fan of like all the cold packs and stuff. I do put it when it's really, really warm. Um, but apart from that, I'm just gonna make sure that there's a lot of aeration. Now, today I'm gonna showcase more about winter packing because that's where it gets crucial, right? So when it's winter, it's really, really cold. Uh, you'll have your heat packs and you got to make sure that there's enough air to be able to do that now i did something wrong right now but this is just an example but i did not open my heat packs ahead of time so i should have opened them up probably an hour ahead of time i like to have them open up for an hour when they're when it's been an hour they're actually really really warm and uh, it's it's relatively good there's a lot of companies that do that'll say 30 but every time you tell me 30 i double it up you tell me, oh yeah, all, all it needs is a 24 hour heat pack. I'll put a 48 hour heat pack. And the reason why is that I'm just saying, if there's an issue that happens, I gotta make sure that that's what happens. So that's why we always use like here, we have, those are 40 hour heat packs, the uni heat packs. So on a normal priority next day arrival shipping, I'll use a 40 hour instead of a 20 hour in case. So I'm gonna have them, I'll just like, I can uh, just activate them a little bit, but I would leave them uh, aside for about uh, one hour and then incorporate them. Now, inside, it's very important for me to make sure that this snake does not move. And I'm gonna explain to you why I don't want this thing to move. So what I'm gonna do is I use, I like to use egg crates. Uh, we, we eat a lot of eggs, you can eat them, but we use them for, a lot of other animals for our leopard geckos, we use that. So we have access to this, but you can use paper, you can use whatnot. So what I do is I basically take the heat pack and I'll put it inside of it <clears throat> and wrap them around. I would take the, I would take them up. I think today I have, I do have elastic bands, so that's pretty good. So I can use these elastic bands today just to make sure that they are tightened up. Now, when you put them in, you gotta make sure that there's one side that there's heat and the other side that there's not. So there's this little sticky part. And, and then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them in there. So the cardboard from the egg crate uh, acts as like, it's gonna get hot, but it's basically, it will heat up the snake, but it will not be directly on top of the animal. So depending on the temperature, uh, 
I can go ahead and put one heat pack or I can put two heat packs. It depends what it is. On very, very cold days, that's what I would do. I would put two heat packs in and everything is groovy. So from this point on, we got our pack, everything is good. There's basically not much, not much room extra here. And then I'm very, very satisfied with how that is. There's not a lot of room for this thing to move. And then on top, once we're gonna close everything up, everything's gonna be perfect. So that's how I would pack. Now on a bigger box, I would probably put a heat pack up on top on the lid as well. But this is the idea that I have when I pack ammo. So then from that point on, I close it up, right? So we're closing it up. Now we know FedEx does not allow holes. So the fact that they don't allow holes means that the heat packs are only gonna go down. So by having two, I crank up the heat by putting them like this, and then after that, it closes up. So we're putting in there, and then I'm basically closing it up, and then taping it up. So, and then that's all we do. And then we're taping it up our box. Now, uh, we can tape the edges here, but I mean, I'm gonna be opening it up uh, soon enough, so I'm gonna go like that. Now, this box is definitely satisfying. We're gonna put the FedEx label up on top. Um, from this point on, uh, we're looking here, we're saying like, okay, you know what, live harmless reptiles, uh, it says this side up, I mean, this is relatively good, right? But again, I gotta have the attention of the driver, okay? I want them to see that these are live animals. So we don't wanna tell them, hey, make sure you do your job, you don't put this, uh, this block upside down. I mean, they have hundreds, if not thousands of boxes that they have to deal with them every day. They don't necessarily know these things. So make sure that you talk with them and you know, have a nice conversation and with them and wish them a good day, you know? So from that point on, I decide, you know, let's put some extra stickers and some extra colors, you know, like on there so that it basically attracts the eye, you know? So we have the live harmless reptiles. We can put one on the side. We can put one on top. Uh, from this point on, any extra stickers. Now, these stickers come from Uline. There's Uline in the US, Uline in Canada. Uh, you can go ahead, purchase them, probably. You can find these things a little bit everywhere. So, no problem. So, we want, I like to have different colors and try to attract the attention of, of everyone, you know? So, basically, it's just live animals, Live harmless reptiles, this side up, this side up, live animals on top, and we're good to go. Now, the way that this snake was closed, if my driver goes, and a lot of people, they tell me that, they're like, I freaked out. They grab them, they grab the box, and they go like this, right? I mean, imagine with the first box from my second video that, from part two, where the cup is just loose inside the box. And I take the box and they go like this. The cup goes right down. There's no lid, the lid busts open and all these things happen. But you know what? My goal is not to tell the FedEx driver that he's incompetent, he's not doing his job. The guy has enough on his plate. He has enough to deal with. My job is to make sure that if he does take the box or if he drops it or if something happens, okay, my snake is secure. I feel that strong enough that if I put it upside down, sideways, so I don't hear anything in there because everything is packaged Properly. So from this point on, this is how I pack my boxes. Now, if it'd be an airline, then what I would do is I would I would puncture one hole on each side just for extra oxygen intake. Uh, the further I go, and depending on the heat, usually a little bit more holes I put in. But that's pretty much how it is. Now, my client, our customer, this spent hundreds of hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, from us. He gets this box. He goes home. He picks up this box. Often, it can happen, the FedEx driver just leaves it on the porch and people get freaked out or whatnot, you know, but um, the client gets the box, he's super excited. I mean, he spent thousands of dollars and they're basically supporting us. Uh, it's for us to thank them. So I basically feel definitely good that when my client gets this, uh, this box, they're gonna feel like as if they're getting something that we put in our heart into it. So they're gonna go open up the box, you know, open it up. Like it's Christmas, right? I mean, they, they've saved up money. 
to be able to purchase this animal because they have projects and goals for that, you know? So from this point, that's where it is. So they're opening up the box and they, they see all the extra work and it's basically a slow case unboxing video. Ooh, ooh. They're gonna open it up, heat's gonna rise, it's gonna be good. And then what they see is exactly what they want. They don't wanna see a loose snake. They don't wanna see anything going on. So from this point on, I mean, this is how we do it. Um, make sure that if you like educational and knowledgeable videos like we do, make sure that you subscribe our channel, you like this video, uh, comment to us what else you want us to share with you guys. We have a lot of knowledge. We have a thousand ideas that we want to give out, but maybe the more you guys, more, more like uh, interaction you guys have with us, the more we'll be able to basically give you the information that is needed. So until then, thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for going through this whole awesome shipping reptile bit like three videos and um i hope you guys learned something i hope that we're going to build towards a more positive and a better industry by doing it right and until then thank you very much no stress talk to you soon